Hi, I'm Ron Lohman. I'm here with my colleague, Manmeet, and we're going to talk about some of the more interesting parts of AI SOCs, and it's really scaling these systems. You know, we see a lot of uh, uh, die that's just packed filled full of, of SRAM and processing capabilities. And with the complexity of, of AI algorithms, um, sometimes that's not even enough. Um, so they're having to, to scale these to, to multiple systems. What kind of trends are you seeing with respect to uh, uh, the IP that, that Synopsys delivers in these systems? Uh, where, where these chips are very SRAM intensive and these have localized SRAMs very close to their intelligent processing units or IPUs. And again, the same thing is happening. These, these dies are getting so large, they're almost approaching the maximum reticle size and customers want to split them down right in the center so that each IPU from different dies can and access the SRAM of these other dies. This helps out with yields, I assume, and um, it's not just two dies. Sometimes we see four, eight. In some of these systems, I'm seeing more and more racks of these systems with this type of connectivity. So what kind of connectivity is actually connecting these, these systems together? They want very high bandwidth per beachfront, which is your edge of the die. Okay. They need the lowest possible power, but what's really, really, really important when you're splitting the die right in the center is the lowest possible latency and, and also the lowest possible BER. So essentially zero BER. We have customers talking about 10 to the power minus 22, which is essentially being now termed as a reliable link. And, 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 the, and the lowest possible latency. So, so that these different CPUs that are now in different dies, they, you make them look like a single big CPU and you want to get your power as low as possible. And, and with these die-to-die -die interfaces that, that Synopsys is offering, we, we, we're talking here about less than one picojoule per bit. So can you describe to me some of the different um, markets that these die-to-die chip-to-chip solutions are, are satisfying? These use cases can be split into two distinct categories. Uh, we have, we have a, a category that needs to go on an organic substrate, and then we have a category that needs to go on an interposer. Okay. okay. So, so the organic substrate is serviced by ultra short reach, extra short reach, CERDES type of technologies, serializer, deserializer type of technologies. And this is where we are talking about speeds of 56 gigabits per second NRZ or up to 112 PAM4. And then we have the second piece of this market, which is more, more uh, HBM derived or uh, which is more parallel DDR style of interface. Right, and we see a lot of AI accelerators that are incorporating HBM. So those already have requirements to add the um, interposers, correct? Exactly. So that is based on the interposer technologies, and this is where this is where we're talking of speeds which are which are kind of aligned to HBM speeds of of 3.2 gigabits per second or 3200 megabits per second. And and in the next couple of years, they will be transitioning themselves or going higher to up to six point something in the future. There are variants of these standards. As an example, Intel offers what is referred to as AIB, yep. which is about which is about two gigabits per second. There's another standard that's coming up that's called BOW or a bunch of wires. Uh -huh. And that, that is kind of all over the place right now as well. These are the standards. The parallel side goes on interposer and, and the, the serial 30s style, which is ultra short reach, extra short reach 30s, these go on the organic substrate. There is something in between the, 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 the organic substrate and the interposer that is coming, which is referred to as in for integrated fan out. This is a technology that is even started by TSMC. And, and this promises higher density than the organic substrate, but it's less complex and a lot cheaper than, than the interposer. So one of the things we also see is a lot of um, different proprietary controllers. It seems like it's the wild west out there. Is exactly. that, that how the market is today? So it's a very, very fractured market, right? What, what, what a lot of our customers are doing today is something proprietary. Yeah. Remember, most of the customers in these cases are owning both sides of the link. Right. It's the same die, same homogeneous dies. 
by the same customer exactly the same. Right. And when I say proprietary, it, it can be something like a very, very light transport layer controller that they're building. It can be something as simple as interlocking type of controllers, which is again, a very light controller. Right. Uh, they're looking at different uh, technologies to improve the bit error rate. These are like light forward error correction type of technologies. There's another concept called replay, which is instead of trying to correct the faulty packets, you just retransmit it. Again, the goal is to get to these five key care of ours that we talked about, which is, you know, the latency and the bit error rate and the reach and the bandwidth and the power. So, so they're building something very proprietary to meet these five key parameters. Uh, there's a lot of work happening in the open compute platform. And, and what they're doing is they are essentially saying, just abstract the file layer, get us to something which is standard like a pipe 5.1.1, which is a SERDI style of a pipe interface, right. and, and do whatever you want to do behind it. So how does Synopsys address this problem with all the different interconnect and, and uh, solutions that are out there today? We have both sides of the puzzle here. So we have our ultra short reach, extra short reach, 112 gig PAM4 Phi, which is also backwards compatible to 56 gig below NRZ mode. Uh, and then we also have the parallel side of it, which is compliant to the HPI and the AIB standards. And again, we have super optimized them around the five key parameters that I keep talking about, which is the bandwidth of each front, which is the lowest possible power, the lowest possible latency, uh, the, the lowest uh, bit error rate, and, and then the reach, how long can you go on the interposer or the organic substrates. On top of that, we are also working with the foundries and the packaging vendors and the pump houses to really, really deeply understand different type of organic substrates, the co-wash, the integrated fan out, etc. All these different packaging technologies and how they are coming together. And then finally, the digital side of it, right? So again, uh, our goal is to get to the standard pipe 5.1 one interface there, which is a SERDI style of pipe interface. And, and then we have a lot of right pieces of technology to help our customers go from there to, to what, however they want to implement their digital piece behind it. And, and again, it's a lot of collaboration, uh, a lot of interop type of activities that we work with our customers to enable them to get all the way up to their fabric bus. Right, so a lot of expertise and a lot of coordination with all different types of components, a very interesting uh, engineering problems, so some exciting times with some uh, a growing market with AI SOCs. So I want to thank you for sharing your expertise, and if you want to learn more, please visit synopsis.com. Thank you.